What's up, everybody? Thanks for coming back and uh, doing devotionals with me today. Um, today we're going to be reading in chapter 8 of John. Let me pray for us real quick, and then we'll get started. Lord, thank you for another day of, of um, another day in a life with you, Father. Thank you for another opportunity to read your word, and um, I just pray that you would guide us today, Lord, that you'd open our hearts and open our ears, allow us to, to understand and just um, be changed by encountering you through your word today. In your name, Lord Jesus, amen. All right, guys, let's read chapter 8. So, in chapter 8, it says, Then each one went to his house, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn, he went to the temple again, and all the people were coming to him. He sat down and began to teach them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery, making her stand in the center. Teacher, they said to him, this woman was caught in the act of committing adultery. In the law of Moses... In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They asked this to trap him in order that he might have evidence to accuse him. Jesus stooped down and started writing on the ground with his finger. When they persisted in questioning him, he stood up and he said to them, The one without sin among you should be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he stooped down again and continued writing on the ground. When they heard this, they left one by one starting with the older men. Only he was left with the woman in the center. When Jesus stood up, he said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, Lord, she answered. Neither do I condemn you, Jesus said. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. And so just a quick note here in this story. It's interesting that they, they catch this woman in the, in the act of adultery, and they bring the woman. Well, if she's in the act of adultery, there's two people involved here, right? And so they, they just single out the woman and then they take her and, and they're threatening to stone her. And they even use Moses' law, right? And it did say that, that adulterers back in under the law were stoned, but not just the woman. Both would be stoned, right? And so it's funny, they pick and choose how they're going to um how they're going to hold these people accountable here, right? And so they bring, and they bring the person before Jesus, trying to figure out what he's going to do and catch him, right? They're not worried about the heart of the matter, right? They're just very strict and legalistic, right? And so Jesus even says, like we saw back earlier in John 3, that he didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world, right? And so with these guys, he says, all right, well, who of you is without sin? And we don't know what he's writing in the ground, right? But it, it's possible Maybe he was writing down the Ten Commandments, right? He, he, and within those Ten Commandments, they're like, oh, well, well, I've sinned. Okay, so, you know, who am I to judge? I can't judge and condemn her. I have sinned too. And again, we see this even today with, um, with sexual sin, that we might make a big deal of certain sexual sins. We might even try to make laws to govern and govern morality, biblical morality, right? Which I don't believe that that's the case that we should be doing. Um, but then we tend to neglect talking about other sexual sins. You know, we might talk about this over here, but we'll ignore um, things like pornography or masturbation, and we don't talk about that. That's sexual sin, too. It, it, all sin is sin, and all sin um, hurts our relationship with God, right? All sin needs to be repented of and turned from and not live in, living in it as a lifestyle. Um, so let's talk about all sin, not just pick out one individual sin and one individual person and try to condemn them. And so Jesus says, now with this, he says, I, I don't condemn you, right? But he also gives her the instruction, go in from now on and do not sin anymore. So he calls her away from her sin. Don't do this anymore. Don't let this be your lifestyle. Go on, right? All right, so let's, let's jump into the rest here. In 12, it says, Jesus spoke to them again. I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, You are testifying about yourself. Your testimony is not valid. Even if I testify about myself, Jesus replied, my testimony is true, because I know where I came from and where I'm going. But you don't know where I came from or where I'm going. You judge by human standards. I judge no one. And if I do judge, my judgment is true, because it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. Even in your law is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am the one who testifies about myself, and the Father who sent me testifies about him, about me. Then they ask him, Where is your father? 
You know neither me nor my father, Jesus answered. If you knew me, you would also know my father. He spoke these words by the treasury while teaching in the temple, but no one seized him because his hour had not yet come. Then he said to them again, I'm going away. You will look for me and you will die in your sin. Where I'm going, you cannot come. So the Jews said again, He won't kill himself, will he? Since he says, Where I'm going, you cannot come. You are from below, he told them. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Therefore I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Who are you? They questioned. Exactly what I've been telling you from the very beginning, Jesus told them. I have many things to say and to judge about you, but the one who sent me is true, and what I have heard from him, these things I tell the world. They did not know he was speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own. But just as the Father taught me, I say these things. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I am always do what he please, what pleases him. As he was saying these things, many believed in him. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you continue in my word, you really are my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We are descendants of Abraham, they answered him, and we have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say you will become free? Jesus responded, Truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. A slave does not remain in the household forever, but a son does remain forever. So if the son sets you free, you really will be free. I know you are descendants of Abraham, but you are trying to kill me because my word has no place among you. I speak what I have seen in the presence of the Father, so then you do what you have heard from your father. Our father is Abraham, they replied. If you were Abraham's children, Jesus told them, you would do what Abraham did. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You're doing what your father does. We weren't born of sexual immorality, they said. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me because I came from God and I am here. For I didn't come on my own, but he sent me. Why don't you understand what I say? Because you cannot listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he speaks from his own nature, because he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Who among you can convict me of sin? If I am telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? The one who is from God listens to God's words. This is why you don't listen, because you are not from God. The Jews responded to him, Aren't we right in saying that you're a Samaritan and have a demon? I do not have a demon, Jesus answered. On the contrary, I honor my father and you dishonor me. I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it and judges. Truly I tell you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Then the Jews said, Now we know you have a demon. Abraham died, and so did the prophets. You say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died, and the prophets died? Who do you claim to be? If I glorify myself, Jesus answered, my glory is nothing. My father, about whom you say he is our God, he is the one who glorifies me. You do not know him, but I know him. If I were to say I don't know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. The Jews replied, You aren't fifty years old yet, and you've seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus was hidden and went out of the temple. And so real quick, right at the end there, when Jesus says, before Abraham, I was, or I am, not I was, <laughs> before Abraham was, I am, what he's saying there, he's claiming the name of Yahweh. When, when um, Moses talks to, the, um, to, to God in the burning bush, he says, I am, right? And so Jesus is claiming this name. He's claiming his divinity. He's saying, I am God. And that's at the point there where they get ready to stone him because they're like, blasphemy. 
you're not God, they don't believe, right? Um, and another thing, you know, from this text, we, we see that, again, this is during the, the festival of tabernacles, right, or shelters. And so in the last chapter, he talks about the fact that he is water, right? And in this chapter, he focuses really in on this idea of being the light. And both of these would take place um, it, during the, the Feast of Tabernacles. They're remembering when the, the people were traveling in the wilderness between Egypt and the Promised Land. And during that time, they often they needed water, and God provided water miraculously through uh, Moses either hitting the rock or what he was supposed to speak to the rock for the second time, but out of anger, he hit it again. Um, and Jesus is saying, I am the water. I am the source of water. And then here he's also saying, I am the light. Now, as they were traveling through the wilderness, God manifested himself in the form of a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night. And so he's saying, I am the light of the world. I am that light. And so during each of these Jewish festivals, Jesus reveals through their own festivals how he is God, how these festivals point to Jesus and who he is and his, his identity. And, and he's rejected over and over again, right? Not by everyone. Um, and, and so he's, he's showing who he is and showing why he came. And then he also continues to talk about what, he, what he's going to do. He's going to die. He's going to be the, the Passover lamb, the sacrifices himself for them. Um, he is the light of the world. If you be a, a disciple, a follower of Christ, then you're going to follow the light. Um, and so for us, our takeaway is just that, man, Jesus is the fulfillment of all that he had said that all of God's promises, right, for his people. Um, and so, you know, for us today, um, just look at this, you know, the, the first part, we want to focus on the fact that we don't try to judge people and, and um, create kind of a levels of, of judging um, different sins, whether they be sexual sins or other sins. Man, let, let's focus on redeeming people. Let's focus on loving people. We do have to speak out what is sin, but our goal is always to bring people back into relationship, not push them away, not shooting to condemn people. Um, and then Secondly, through the next part of the text, just looking at the fact that Jesus is the source of life. If we're going to follow him, or if we're going to be a Christian, we need to be following him. We need to be following his word and keeping his word. So thanks for joining me today. Um, please subscribe, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Have a great day.